welcome to Discovering Arts Music Group. But you can call us the AMG because, well, we're nice like that. Tonight we have an amazing lineup with some of the world's biggest DJs. We have the incredible shapeshifters, Andy Durant and Sheldon. Yes, they are all playing under one roof. Let's have a look at what's coming up. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. ready to chat to tonight's DJs and get those hot interviews but first it would only be right to tell you about us right right well DAMG TV is a unique show and a beacon of musical creativity sounds lovely doesn't it well it is well we don't do that but what we do do is showcase everything that's great about discovering music now obviously tonight's acts are very much discovered with all of them traveling the globe whether it be with superstars new single releases or albums and I'm sure you want to go and meet them so what are we waiting for? Let's head backstage for a chat with each of our, wait for it, superstar DJs. Here we go. <laughs> One of Ministry of Sound's favorite DJs. He's a touring sensation with a hit 40 album. Please give it up for Sheldon. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. How are you feeling about playing here? Yeah, really excited. Um, I haven't actually played in Camden before. Um, I've lived in London for a very long time, but uh, Camden, this is a first, so I'm very excited. We've all had horrendous jobs, and you were once a Waitrose trolley pusher. It's not a horrendous job, actually. It's quite fun. I bet you get good arms from doing that, right? Yeah, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the compilation album, my ministry of sound live Canada and in uh, top 40 in many countries around the world, which was amazing. Um, no, I never thought that, and I'm still there's still a long way to go. Um, Still got loads of records, still looking for that number one. Um, if you know, you've got to do everything, everything you can to do what you want to do, your passion. You know? I love Ministry of Sound, and um, Ministry of Sound have helped me along the way for the last two and a half years. And um, to play in that main room of the club is incredible. Like, so I started off being a clubber there, and uh, me and my friend, my best friend Jonas, we, uh, we went to see Mark Knight play for Swarm Nights. And I remember standing in the corner by the speaker, and uh, I said to him, I said, if, if I ever get to play the box, I'll cry. But no, it was very emotional and I'm so lucky to have got there to play in that box and follow many others that have played in there. So, <laughs> World Domination, yeah, you always plan that. It's something you plan around the kitchen table, but um, uh, it'll be a day and uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, everyone will know when it happens. You have to play as much as you can, but now, I mean, now it's about producing, producing music and, and, and getting yourself out there. It's definitely about building yourself up as a brand. Um, I would say, if there's any advice for people, I would say just just find something in your niche and, and go with it. You know? Thank you so much. There's two. This duo have been telling us they're a different person for years and they've worked with none other than Christina Aguilera and George Michael. Please give it up for the shapeshifters. Damn girl! Damn girl! Damn. Speaking of damn girl, how do you feel about playing tonight? It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Can you kind of please your part of this tonight and filling up for it? Anywhere that's got a hot tub. I'm pleased to be. Now, as I mentioned, you have worked with the likes of Christina Aguilera and George Michael. I mean, did Christina Aguilera make you a bit dirty? Did George want to give you a bit of faith? How was that? If I'm going to be totally honest, never met Christina. Worked with her, but never met her. Um, George met a lot and um, never got dirty with him, to be fair, but it, he is a really good guy. Yeah. I mean, working with people like that must kind of be like life-changing career-wise. It's a lot of fun. It's, you know, you get a set of vocals, in Christina's case, and you start working with them, and um, you realise just how good they are. Just, you know, you might have a preconception as to what they're like or do this. You get the vocal. It's brilliant. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. <laughs> Damn we're loving this. Damn, girl. Now, you have been around for a very long time, and we obviously are glad about that, but, you know, the music scene is hard. How have you kind of kept in, in this world? I think we just carried on doing what we do as opposed to trying to do what everyone else does. And I think, especially in dance music, there's a lot of scene genre jumping. But we've always stayed, stayed true to what we believe in, which is just pure straight-up house music. And I think 
people know us for that and they've stayed with us for that and we're, we're not trying to do anything we're not, we're not good at. So obviously you've got a lot of longevity and there's people out there that are maybe wanting to break into DJing. What would be your advice to people out there that wanted to do that? It's um, to carry on doing what you do and it, nowadays you have to make a record if you're really going to do it and you have to make a great record and you have to kind of somehow just like you're going to get knocked back time and time and time again. Just carry on going and if you're good enough it will work. You said, you said on Twitter, it feels like the most productive year in the studio for a while. So much music ready to go. And we got all fired up here at Damn TV. Yeah. Tell us about this. What's, what's new? What's happening? What can we wait to hear? We've just signed a track to Defected um, called Arrows at the moment. Uh, we're just doing some stuff with them. Um, we've just remixed Lovebirds, Holding On uh, for Defected as well. And we're just about to sign something with Tool Room Records as well. So lots going on there, um, but I think the, the quote was was there to say that we've struggled a bit with the whole EDM thing over the last few years, and I, I think music for us has, has got very noisy and very soulless. Um, and you know, listen, people have great success with it. I don't knock them for that, but for us, it feels like it's coming back our we way. Like to, we like to dance from the waist down, not from the shoulders up. You know, with EDM, it's like this. With us, it's it's more like that, so, you know, we like to, like, move and groove. The point of the matter is, is that basically it feels it feels good again and I'm, I'm really inspired by the scene again. Well, we are glad to have you here, for sure. And you've been resident at Pasha for, like, four years now, which is... Eight! Eight! Eight. Resident probably for about six, but we... The first time we were took there was with our good friend Frankie Knuckles. He took us there eight years ago now for Death Mix. So it's been a long love affair with that club, yeah. So what keeps you going back for more? Because it's the best club in the world. It really is that similar. It's like driving an Aston Martin. So, you know, it's, it's the best place to... When you stand in that box and you look out and you think, God, I'm playing in the main room at Pasha, it's a pretty special moment. And was that always the dream for you when you started out? Was that kind of you, you looked to be playing there? Yeah, I mean, I got, went there, I think the first time I went there was 92. And yeah, and it was like my one day, one day. And to be able to look across the floor and uh, be playing there, it's fantastic. And how do you keep this energy up? Because you've got a busy schedule. How do you do it? What? No. <laughs> Sambuca. I was saying Sambuca. I was toning it down. I was hoping that that wasn't going to come out. I was hoping it would be a bit more like Sambuca. Well, well sorry, that, we're not having that. Damn, girl! For the record, I've never taken crack cocaine. <laughs> no, it's uh, Sambuca. Genuinely, Sambuca. It fuels us the whole way. Some people use Red Bull, some people use crack cocaine, but um, we use Sambuca. I think we will stick to the Sambuca. Now, thank you so much for chatting to us and good luck tonight. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you. award winning not only a DJ he's a producer and broadcaster let's meet him give it up for Andy Durant how are you wow what an intro you, <laughs> that's amazing thank you very much I'm very good thank you I'm a little bit hot and sticky after uh, just coming out of proud there but it's uh, yeah it's just a pretty amazing party going on isn't it you have just played how was the atmosphere in there excellent actually yeah it's quite cool I mean uh, last time I was in London was uh, a few weeks ago and it was a totally different sort of crowd uh, a lot kind of more you know big massive hands in the air kind of thing tonight it was really cool just to play be able to play somewhere that was a bit more deep and underground and kind of yeah it's wicked really really enjoyed it now obviously you are a man behind many and many a names you've worked with kind of Tiny Temper, Dizzy Rock school Jesse J how is it playing with such big names well I think one of the things that I like most about DJing is not like I just said I mean I can go from gig to gig playing completely different things and I think um, the most exciting thing about being a DJ is being able to turn up to different places play completely different music and, and kind of judge an atmosphere but also the difference between warming up for someone like example or Jesse J or Paul Van Dyke or the shapeshifters tonight 
that's what's like the challenge for me. That's what's really exciting, being able to kind of skip into a bit of drum and bass and hip hop and deep house and EDM and everything else. That's kind of what, what I, why I do it, I think. And you have been around for years, and obviously those kind of people are very much today. But we have you have done stuff with uh, Run DMC, which excuse me for this pun. I'm hoping they were not too tricky for you. How how has that kind of changed? Has the music industry really changed? Have you seen it develop, get worse, get better? How is it for you now? I don't know. It's changed like completely, but it does every like two or three years, to be honest. So I mean, I can't. I don't know if it's better or worse. It's never better or worse. It's just different, uh, and I think that's kind of why it's why it's so exciting. It means that some people kind of get left behind and certain names disappear off the map and you get new ones coming through but that especially as a, as a radio presenter is what I really find exciting that there's always something new to grab hold of and something that kind of piques your interest I mean dance has been as you know dance house music whatever you want to call it electronic music has been going for for so long now since the, the late 80s and it's got no no signs of kind of disappearing so yes it's a great time for it right now seems to kind of be coming into everyone's tracks. I mean, everyone wants dance music. Like, people that used to be just pop have now wanting to get dance music. Why do you think it's become so popular? I don't know. It's kind of, well, there's the huge EDM explosion in America. So oh, no. there's the money aspect of it. So you've got your big kind of stars who want to cash in on the on the big kind of Vegas club scene sort of thing. But it's also just, the, I guess, the cool factor as well. You know, if you're a... If you're a big pop star, you've had a, a decent big album, then you might want to think, well, I want to try something a bit different. I want to try going a little bit, a little bit more left field, a bit more underground. So usually people reach out to the kind of electronic artists, and yeah, it's, it's cool. Everyone loves putting their hands in the air, right? As long as they've shaved, everyone loves it. You good? I have, I have, I have. Don't worry. No, obviously. <laughs> well, I won't make you put your arms up. No, you did touch on it a minute ago. You're obviously a broadcaster as well as being a DJ, as well as being a producer as well. There's many a strings to your bow. If you had to pick one of those things, you could only do one of them tomorrow, which one would you pick? I would probably pick radio every time, actually. I wouldn't have to think about it too hard. I love making music. I love touring around and DJing, but there's nothing quite as exciting as kind of putting the mic up and seeing it go red and, and just having like a, a big box of amazing records to share with people. I think that's like the, the most exciting thing. So yeah, I'd, I'd, I think I'd ever be able to give it up. If I get fired from everywhere else, I'll just do it in my bedroom. and. Pirate Radio, bring it back. Well, I'm sure and I know that everyone was very happy in there and we loved your performance, so well done and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we've got time for tonight and I think you'll agree we here at DAMG have provided some pretty amazing DJs for you. Thank you to the amazing Sheldon, the incredible Shapeshifters and of course multi-award winning Andy Durant. Make sure you join us again soon to see some more exciting and groundbreaking acts. I'm Anna Johnson and I'm off to try my hands at the decks. See you soon. Yeah.